God bless football, Billy Gill. God bless football, Mikey A. God bless football, Stugats. Mikey A, right before we came on, we have a loaded show for you today. We're excited about it, uh, both on TV and on the audio side as well. But Billy, was uh, he's giving us a hard time. He's delighting in our misery. So, uh, Billy, why don't you go ahead and share with the audience what you were sharing with me and Mikey A right before we started recording this. Well, okay, so we have a lot to get to today. We have, as you guys mentioned, a lot on the audio side, a lot on the TV side. We have different products right now going on because we have a lot of interviews on audio. On TV today, you're going to get Raheem Moster, you're going to get Austin Eckler, um, and you're going to get us today. It's Friday. We're going to be recapping Thursday Night Football at some point, even though the game was absolutely dreadful. But I have a hypothetical that I've been thinking about since we had a conversation with Chris Sims earlier this week that I've been waiting to get your guys' answer on. All right, so we had that conversation with Sims and Golick, and you can hear that on the audio side. So if you're just watching on TV, you can hear that on the audio version of God Bless Football, a conversation with Chris Sims and Mike Golick, only the second time they have done it together. Uh, this is, <laughs> and it was great. Like those two are awesome. football dorks and, <laughs> and they love flexing their football knowledge. And so check it out there. You can also check out Nitro, right, Billy, on the audio That's side? That's right. On the audio side, you can te- check out Nitro, who is confronting Mike Wright of the fantasy footballers for blowing him off on the draft. And then Mike Wright, uh, spoiler alert, has receipts where he proves that it was not, in fact, his fault. And we find out that Nitro might actually be good at fantasy football somehow, which is very surprising. It'd be great if somehow Mike Wright is asking Nitro questions yeah. about his fantasy team. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I'd like this whole thing to go. All right, Billy, your question for both me and Mike EA. We are both Jeff fans. Okay, so, well, I mean, you'd think we'd start with Thursday Night Football, but I guess we're not going to. So Aaron Rodgers obviously has gotten hurt. We don't know if Zach Wilson is good. Right. If you'd like to start with Thursday Night Football, the Niners are really good. The Giants are terrible. Go ahead, Billy. Well, that's pretty much it. Brock Purdy's good. Daniel Jones, we're just never going to know if he's good or not. Hey, Andrew Luck is back, and he's in a costume playing trivia at the end of Thursday Night Football for some reason. If anyone stayed up long enough to watch the postgame show on Amazon. Right. And Tyrod Taylor is a giant. Who knew? Yeah. yeah, well, I, I don't know. So here's my question for you guys as Jets fans that I was wondering about, because you seem to think that the Jets can just get whoever they want to come in and replace Zach Wilson uh, and Aaron Rodgers. And one of the people that you think that you can get is Kirk Cousins, who I have on more than one occasion described as a first ballot Hall of Famer, which may or may not be a ridiculous take by me. I guess we'll find out. And on Monday's episode of God Bless Football, he was my number one quarterback in the NFL through two weeks. I mean, not his fault. I really don't think it's crazy to think that he could be a first ballot Hall of Famer, like with the numbers that he has. Is that crazy? Yes. Why? Yeah, a little bit. It's a little bit crazy. Well, he's not done yet. I'm not saying his numbers aren't better. Well, listen, it's the product of today's NFL. So his numbers will be better than some first ballot Hall of Famers. They're probably already better than guys like Troy Aikman, but he's not getting in on the first ballot. There's mm-hmm. No way. He hasn't won anything. I mean, yeah, I guess <laughs> he's throwing a lot of pass yards and a lot of touchdowns in garbage time. But Mike, I bet you if you look, if, if you look it up, I, Mikey, I bet you if you look it up, Kirk Cousins' career numbers are already better than Troy Aikman's. I can I can almost guarantee it. Yeah, look it up. I, yeah, I, right. yeah. No. Anyway, I, I Billy, Mikey A, and I right. never. Mikey A and I never said we think we can get any quarterback. That's not we didn't. We didn't uh, say that. No, that's what? true. Yes. No, we talked quarterback. about how right. nice it would be, but right. we haven't said we could get them. Okay. Yeah. So, anyways, in the conversation that we had uh, with Chris Sims, I believe the question was, "Well, what would it take to get Kirk Cousins on the Jets?" Which got me to thinking. What if the price was Aaron Rodgers? Would you <laughs> trade Aaron Rodgers for Kirk Cousins, not knowing how Aaron Rodgers will come back off of surgery and knowing that the Jets may or may not be talented enough to make a deep postseason run with a capable quarterback who is not named Zach Wilson? Right. Um, You're wow. an evil man, Billy. You're an you evil really man. You really are. No, he's I delighting just, in this. The Dolphins, he has I, the best team in the You should no. do it. No, he's got the best team in the NFL. He's got the best offense in the NFL. Uh, he does. And so he's delighting in our misery, and he should, uh, quite frankly. Uh, I'm no not delighting. It's here. just it's just a hypothetical question. If the price to get Kirk Cousins was Aaron Rodgers, is Aaron Rodgers, 
Would you do it? Because then that adds another little juicy layer to the Aaron Rodgers situation, which is then he's Brett Favre again because he has left the Jets. He has left <laughs> the Packers to go to the Jets, and then he ends up on the Vikings. And oh, wouldn't it be great if he won something on the Vikings? The only difference would be he would stay at the Jets without showing anyone his penis. That would be it. That would that that's uh, that, Billy. It's not exactly. It's not apples to apples. That's all. I just saying. wanted to say that word. That, <laughs> it, that's all. That's all that was. <laughs> I'm just saying it's a slightly different. Uh, yeah. I have a question. May I ask you a question real quick before I answer this? Sure. Does that mean Randall Cobb and Lazard go with Aaron Rodgers to Minnesota? No, I think they would be staying at least for oh, this season. That's tough. Okay. Yeah. So we're stuck with Cobb. Um, just for this year. Okay. Uh, Mikey, yeah, you want to go first or? So Billy is asking I, us, we have a we have a team that is built to win right now, a defense that is supposed to be a top five defense. We have two good running backs. Uh, Kirk Cousins would be united with uh, reunited with Dalvin Cook. <laughs> so maybe there's something there. Uh, Billy is asking if we would trade Aaron Rodgers straight up right now today uh, for Kirk Cousins. Go ahead, Mikey. I'm going to go with no. And wow, the reason okay. I'm going to go with no is because I think – Aaron Rodgers would go scorched earth on the entire NFL if he was traded like that. And okay. I would rather have him on my team when he does that. So you would rather the unknown of Aaron Rodgers at 39 coming off a torn Achilles. Um, mm -hmm. You're confident enough that he'll he'll be good enough next year and maybe even play an extra year where you want to roll the dice with Aaron and you don't care about this year. Just to prove everybody wrong. Yes, I think he does that. Right. Well, to be clear, he'll be ready for the playoffs this year, so you don't have to wait until next year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what <laughs> playoffs? Thanks, Billy. Oh, I feel like that was a dig for the Vikings playoffs. <laughs> um, if they make it, man, this is tough. This is tough because I do believe this is what's going on with the Jets. Like from my standpoint, you either have to uh, allow Zach Wilson to throw the ball, like just, just. He's the second pick in the draft. Let him play football. Find out if you have a quarterback in Zach Wilson. You're not going to win games in 2023 running the ball and playing defense. It doesn't work unless you're Tennessee. Okay? So 13 to 10, you're not going to win. You're not going to beat Buffalo and the Dolphins 13 to 10. Play defense, run the football, game management. It's not going to happen. You have to trust Zach Wilson or at least see what Zach Wilson has. And the Jets apparently aren't ready to do that. What they're also not ready to do, and I'm afraid they're doing this just to not piss off Aaron Rodgers, who played four snaps for them, is they don't want to go out and sign like a Matt Ryan or someone like that uh, in the event, you know, that quarterback is good enough to get them to the playoffs and Aaron Rodgers might be salty because they went out and got a veteran quarterback because we know how upset he was at Green Bay when they merely drafted his replacement. So uh, this is a really tough one, because if you do this, you're never going to have Aaron Rodgers playing quarterback for your team. If contracts didn't matter, did you see enough from Daniel Jones last night that you would bring him over to the Jets? I didn't answer Kirk Cousins yet. You're already on to Daniel Jones. Well, yeah, I, yeah, I, you're not going to trade Aaron Rodgers for Kirk Cousins. I already know your answer. But I would for Daniel Jones? No, I don't know. I'm asking. Uh, i trade him for Brock Purdy. You can't trade. Well, that's not an option. You can't trade Aaron Rodgers for anyone, right? Like, you just, you can't. You can't do it, no. You, you can't do it. But you also shouldn't be like, I feel like the organization is being held hostage by Aaron Rodgers and his feelings. Like, that's why, like, Matt Ryan's out there. Why not go sign him? Why not? Why? Oh, my Someone God. Someone tell me. You're joking, right? Uh, did you I mean, did you watch Matt Ryan last season? That's why. Did you watch Zach Wilson last week? <laughs> yeah, but Matt Ryan is comfortable at home. He's got he his is. feet up laughing. At yeah. Zach Wilson, and you're gonna th think they're gonna bring him in? No, that's not happening. Phillip you really Rivers. want them? You really want them? <laughs> what was that look? Like? I think I think you should sign Philip Rivers' entire family to play offensive line. Billy, our quarterback is Zach Wilson, man. Yeah, but you you're talking about Matt Ryan or Philip Rivers as your replacement. That's not going to go better. Uh, you're probably right. Carson Wentz, I don't want. Kirk Cousins is good. <laughs> oh, man. Kirk, I need younger. <laughs> Would you take Nick Foles? No. Really? No. 
Um, I'd rather see what we have in Zach Wilson than Nick. But Foles. you know, but you like how look, is that? How is that still a sentence that comes out of your mouth? Yeah, I want to know Mike, you what not, Zach Wilson is. We've seen it. We've been three years. We've seen it with two offensive coordinators. We've seen it with weapons. We've seen it with an offensive line. We've seen it with a defense. He's terrible. He's uh, Mike, awful. He's not know, meant for the NFL. But I'm not going to blame those interceptions late in the game on Zach Wilson. I'm going to blame it on the – You don't have to blame him. Blame the 13 incompletions that were nowhere near anybody. All right. (laughs) But you have to trust the kid. Don't you? Like, let him throw the football. No, you don't. No. There's a reason they're not letting him throw the football. Well, (laughs) here's the thing, Sugats. Like, you're very much buying what – I believe is PRBS that they're saying of we want to see what we have in Zach Wilson. Yeah, like right. you know what you have in Zach Wilson, which is why you right. went and got Aaron Rodgers. Like that's True. what the decision was on that one. I, I, then, I think most teams still cheap I, enough to be your backup. I think most teams, given the opportunity, would have gone out and and gotten Aaron Rodgers. I did. Only but, one team did. Only one team showed that well, much interest in Aaron Rodgers. He kind of wanted to play there. I mean, are you telling me if the if he wanted to play for the New York Giants, they wouldn't have gone out and got Aaron Rodgers? What team would not go get Aaron Rodgers except the Chiefs? You know, if he wanted to play in Tennessee, you don't think Vrabel would have gotten him? I mean, of course he would have. I think the I think. Jets were better set up. I think Rodgers definitely chose the Jets, but at the same time, I, I mean, like the 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 Jets needed Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers didn't need the Jets. Hmm. Billy, why are you doing this to us? What am I doing to you? You made me put on my glasses. I'm so confused right now. I mean, I'm trying to read stuff on Kirk Cousins, check out his stats. I, I think Kirk Cousins, I do it. I do. <laughs> Those glasses of yours, can we discuss those? I brought them at a pharmacy. Yeah, go ahead. I just, I don't. Number twos. Go to an eye doctor and have them actually prescribe you with glasses. Okay. Uh, that's what you did, right? Yes, that's what everybody does for the most they part. Do, they don't just go to CVS and buy a couple of pairs off what the did, rack and see which one work? <laughs> no. No. Uh, they're nice. I like them. I'm going to do the rest of the segment for the monitor. That I just, look like you. You do not look like me. <laughs> I could see everything in their reflection. Yeah, right. it's it's yeah. I could read your website history in their reflection. Can you really? <laughs> You're a sick man. <laughs> oh shit. Porn hub, I see it. Oh Jesus. <laughs> Very excited here on God Bless Football. Austin Eckler is back with us for a second season. How you feeling, man? What's going on with you? Wow. Um, how am I feeling? Well, that's a really deep question. I know. Um, but I would say right now I'm in a good place. Uh, feeling a lot of ups, a lot of downs. You know, inside football, outside football. Obviously dealing with the injury right now. Missed last game, and we were zero two. So that that sucks. Um, and add some insert insult to the injury. Um. But hey, for the most part, looking forward and trying to progress just to to get back and keep moving moving forward and up. Have you learned any new uh, songs on your guitar during the off season? <laughs> That's a great question. <laughs> it's still sitting back there. Um, it hasn't moved my girlfriend and I actually have been you. learning some new riffs that we've just made up. Right. Um, I haven't I haven't been big into learning other people's songs. Like for whatever reason, I just like consuming content and consuming like music i just kind of want to like make my own for whatever reason i don't know like in my head i'm like yeah it'd be cool to play theirs but i don't want to make my own so it's been on it's been on the back burner for a little bit uh but yeah we have a couple riffs right now uh we'll get to all the stuff on the field and and off the field as well but first i want to uh i want to ask you about your charity your foundation and what you're doing because i keep getting emails about making donations and i'm getting around to it i promise you i will make a (laughs) donation i don't know if billy will uh and i'm not certain mikey a will but I, I promise I am pledging, okay, money to your charity. Tell us what's going on there. Yeah. Um, so really we're starting to get uh, more aligned in the vision. I think my vision at first was to continue to implement resources into the community yep. and realize that's really broad. Um, so we've done washers and dryers. We've done football equipment. Um, we've done uh, qu- uh, f- things that you can use for homeless uh, weight rooms. And we're like, okay, let me kind of narrow this down to something that's really dear to my heart and near to my heart. And that was the weight rooms, because I think there's a lot of transition or uh, transferable skills that can be learned in the weight room. And so right now we're really looking for new opportunities to build weight rooms. So we just built Long Beach Poly, their weight room, uh, renovated it. And then we're also now going up to uh, Balboa High School and going to be renovating their weight room as well. We'll continue to um, 
build more weight rooms across the nations as we continue to kind of get more uh, of a grasp of a, of a flow. And so right now, all the, the donations and the pledge that you mentioned, which is you can pledge for, I think, like at least 10 bucks for every touchdown that I score to help us go build uh, weight rooms. And so that's where all the money's going towards right now. And that's where the, the real focus is uh, with the Austin Eckler Foundation. Austin, it's been a while since we've spoken to you, not to bring it too much back into football, but it's been kind of crazy what's going, what's been going on with you, what's been going on with the running back position. So in the offseason, you had a little mini holdout situation. We saw what happened with Jonathan Taylor, where he wanted more than he gets put on the pup list. Now we're seeing all of these injuries to running backs who were not getting paid what they should. What do you, I guess, make of the state of the running back position? Because you have all these teams now that are out there starting running backs, and it's going to impact the team, but they're not paying the players what they should be getting paid for being as valuable as they are. Yeah, man, it was uh, an eventful season or off season, I should say. Um, I wouldn't consider mine a holdout uh, because I was just looking for more value if there was any there. Um, and, you know, I've actually got to a point where, you know, ended up getting some incentives with the Chargers. So I, I honestly appreciate them for that because they did not have to do that at all. So they showed good faith. And, you know, I just, you know, I want to stay there. I want to, I want to be a charger, you know, as long as I'm playing in my career and yeah, what we're seeing with, with injuries, it's, it's unfortunate, um, especially, you know, what we saw last night with, you know, Nick Chubb where mm. like, you know, you never want to see anything mm. like that ever. Um, and man, yeah. Injuries are part of the game and, and we know this and you know, people are going to get banged up. That's, that's the NFL. And it, it comes in waves. It seems like where it's like, man, I, now we got all these guys, and especially when it's one position that's getting hurt. It's like, Oh, now there's a narrative built around it. Um, right now running backs are going through it. You know, it's, it's sometimes receivers, but you never want to see people getting hurt, right? Like we want our best players on the field at all times because that's what makes the game exciting. Um, and then, you know, bring, you can bring contracts into it, but you can't really predict injury. Um, and so it's, it, I feel like, there's not too much of a relevance there um, when it's like, cause shoot, I made it through the last two seasons. Haven't missed a game. You know, now I missed my second game of the season. I went with a, you know, with a high ankle sprain, you know, so you can't really predict it. Um, so when it comes to contracts, I feel like there's, you can't, there's the relevant is not it, it's not really correlated um, even though that's how it's been played out with our, um, with our contracts. And that's what's, that's what they're utilizing basically. Like, oh, well, it's, it's riskier to have a running back. Um, and it's like, is it? Cause I've, I haven't, I've missed one game in the past three years. Right. Um, so I don't know. To be clear, you asked for permission to seek a trade. The Chargers granted you that, uh, that permission. And then through that, you got some added incentives from the Chargers. So how it all went down was I first went to the Chargers and this is what everyone kind of misses. Cause the only thing that really got headlines was, Hey, Austin wants a trade. And it wasn't like, hey, I went to the Chargers right away and it was like, hey, I want to be traded. I was like, what's up, Chargers? I've led the NFL in the last two, you know, seasons in touchdowns. I've had 1,600 total yards of offense the last two years in touchdowns or last two years. And if we can, let's get an extension going. And they came back like, sure, we can get an extension. We were just too far apart as far as where we wanted to be. And it was like, okay, if we can't get any ground made, I would love to go seek somewhere else that maybe we can find some value somewhere else. And so that's when I requested a trade after we couldn't get anything done with the chargers. Austin, can you take me onto the field? I'm thinking about that Nick Chubb injury last night and you guys are all ramped up to like go against each other. And then all of a sudden you see an injury like that. Like what happens like from the other side? Like if you're, if you're playing against Nick Chubb, do you, do the, do the uniforms come off? Does the logos come off? And now you're just a bunch of, a, a bunch of people sort of just, feeling for each other there it's it's so tough man it's so tough because yes that does happen i think for that moment but then the moment we blow the whistle and we're back on it like it becomes back to you're on that side i'm on this side like i gotta dominate you like you gotta flip the switch back on because you, you can't play this game timid or you will get hurt uh if you if you're thinking about injury if you're not playing as hard as you can then guess what the person that is is going to pile drive your ass and you're going to get hurt from that or you're gonna get you're gonna get someone else hurt on your team for not doing your job because you're gonna get someone lit up for not blocking or not being in the right spot. So in that moment, yes, absolutely. And you see it after the game as well. You know, you see it after the game where we all come together, right? We're we're dapping it up, you know, talking to people, talking about how your families, you know, wishing each other, you know, the best of, of luck and health going forward. Um, so you see that human aspect, but between the whistles, man, like it, you gotta run through, you gotta run through a guy. Like that's that's the mentality. Um, and unfortunately, like I said, you can't predict injuries, but you never want to see in that like that that are excruciating and, and 
excruciating I met and just like just something that's like you just you feel for him immediately because you know like he's done he's done you know Austin uh, did you want to play did you want to play last Sunday could you have played last Sunday <laughs> hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> if I could have I would have right let's just say I, that I I'm not, ask I'm wondering I'm not just that... sitting out games to no, sit out games no I know, know? I, I'm only asking because I know you can't leave it up to the player the player always, always wants to play but I'm wondering well maybe they don't but I, I'm just wondering I think fans would be interested in that process like what goes on with you talking to team doctors throughout the week yeah uh Really, it's working with our trainers. Our doctors really just help us with the the first like diagnosis of like, hey, what's going on? And then it gets thrown over to our trainers to like kind of you know uh, rehab whatever is happening. So talk to Doctor G, um, who's our doctor, and he's like, hey, look, look, looks like you got a high ankle sprain. All right, cool. All right, start treating it like a high ankle sprain. Go over to the trainers. Have been working through that, um, you know, for the past you know week here and been making good progress. Uh, I've I've played on ankles before. Uh, I've never had a high ankle sprain actually before. So this is something new that I've been dealing with and taking these proper steps and kind of feeling how like, okay, am I able to run on this? Is this something that I can, you know, tape up and brace and still actually make it through a game with? Um, and so there's just it really every situation is different, but that's kind of how the process goes. It's like we're continuing to reevaluate and you can really tell the process the the progress every day because we're so intentional on like how does my ankle feel? Where's the range of motion? It's like, okay, you made it like half an inch further today than you were yesterday or the swelling's gone down like 5%, 10% today. And so you can really actually keep up with, you know, the track of, of progress. And if it goes the other way too, if like, oh, actually it's a little bit more sore today, it looks a little bit worse today, you have more swelling um, and I'm trending in the right direction. And so the, the, when I can play, I'm going to be on the field. Like I'm not, I'm not out here just like, Hey, I need to get this thing pulled up. It's not going to be fully hundred percent, but it'll be a, a point where it's like, okay, it's manageable. I don't think it was so much as like you're choosing to sit out. It's almost like, are they not letting you play? I guess it was kind of Stugatz's right. angle on that yeah. one. Okay. Okay. I mean, I think there is a capacity where they could say that, but really, I don't think they can say you can't play. Well, they're protecting from yourself almost, I guess. They could, yeah, they can do that. They can give me suggestions, but I can say, no, I want to tape it up. I'm ready to go. Right. Um, I mean, I guess coaches could technically say we're just not, not going to put you in. But as far as me within the training room, it's like, Austin, can you go? Can you not? And they're going to give me their best professional advice and probably should probably should lean on that because they're trying to help you get back to the field as well. Um, so, yeah, I would say no, they did not tell me that I couldn't play. Like I, I could have gone out there and played if I was ready. But yeah. That's got to be hard, though, like watching watching that game unfold when you're on the sidelines, knowing that if you're in the game, you could help your team win the game. And so watching it as a spectator, that has to be a miserable experience, no? Yeah, man, it's the, it's the same emotions. Uh, right. I think the most miserable part is not being in the heat of the battle with the guys and feeling what they're feeling. Like, I feel like I, I almost let them down, you know, where it's like I can't. I can't help, but I like, I, I'm here. I see you guys every day. Right. And like, I just, I feel, I feel honestly feel bad. I'm just like, especially when we, yeah, obviously when we lose, it's like, man, like, like, I don't even know if I could have helped, right. If my performance would have been any better. Right. Like I'm not saying that, but it's like, I wasn't there to be able to put my, my stamp on and be there with you guys. And now I come back and see you guys on Monday and I see, you know, just the feeling of after a loss in the NFL it sucks because it runs through the whole organization. We all feel that on our shoulders because we're all put under so much pressure to perform. Um, and, you know, I'm, I come into the building and I wasn't even there. And so it kind of seems like, you know, like you almost feel like an outsider to a point. Right. Um, you know, from that standpoint. So, yeah, it's not it's not great. How does how does week two compare to week one? Because week one was back and forth with the Dolphins and you had a great game. But at the, the last drive, second to last drive, there's times that you're just on the sideline and Joshua Kelly's getting the bulk of the carries. And I'm wondering, like, while you're there and you've done. Billy really hated that because he has you on his fantasy well, team. That's, you know, that's, 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 that's where he's going. Ah, the truth comes out. Uh, that's that's a, like this Kelly character. Uh, that's a story for another day. <laughs> but this Kelly character, I'm telling you, he's taking away your touchdowns. Yeah. He's taking, I mean, my man, you got to get a contract out of here. Here's this Joshua <laughs> Kelly taking all your stats. Like, what he's are we trying, doing here? Billy. Hey, happening? he's got a contract here too, actually. So uh, yeah, he's gotta, we don't care about him, though. Not as much. You. <laughs> so here was here was the thing um you know in that two minute drive the last game you know coach looked at me and, uh, my running back coach was like can you go i was like bro if if my ankle gets kicked or if i get tackled on it like 
I don't know if I'm like, I'm going to need to come out. So, so it's two right minute there. drive. I, I can't be in the game right now. It's too, I'm too much of a liability. Cause if we only have one timeout and if I had to go down cause my ankle, cause I can't run, then it's going to use our timeout. And so it was really just, you know, uh, uh, me coming to the conclusion, like, okay, I got to get my ankle looked at. Like I came back in, I heard it like in the third quarter and then just put some tape on over my shoe called, it's called a spat. I spatted my shoe and then tried to go back in and it just, it, it was, wasn't what I was expecting. Cause I'm used to the the lower ankle sprains where it's like, Hey, tape it up. You'll be fine. High ankle sprains. It's a little different. Cause it, it deals with like the turning of your knee and like the rotation of, of your knee and not necessarily always your, your ankle. So, um, it was just something new, but that's why I wasn't able to finish the game then. Um, but hey, when, once we get back, yeah, I'll definitely be uh, getting in there and taking those reps for sure. Get Kelly out of there, right? For Billy, uh, just for Billy. Okay? <laughs> hey, the thing is, he's got he's got to also get his too because right. look, I'm you guys have seen me like I'm five eight, you know, one ninety five. Like I'm not able to. I mean, it's it's hard to believe anyone is, but can take every snap as a running back in the NFL. Right. Um, and so if you want me, Billy, when it really matters, which is at the end of the season, when we're about to go to playoffs, then yep. you need me to have Josh Kelly in there balling out. Back off, yeah. Billy. That's yeah, what he's saying. Right. <laughs> yeah. uh, how frustrated, Austin, is your locker room right now? Because you guys are so talented, and yet you're sitting here at 0-2. It's early, but you're 0-2. Yeah, I mean, being 0-2 in anything is, is it sucks. Right. Like, if you're 0-2 in fantasy right now, you're mad. <laughs> yes. You know, and right. so, you know, and that's, that's the thing that's kind of like your side hobby for fun. And now – imagine if that was your full-time job right that's this what what it is for us it's not fantasy for us it's reality for us where we're putting every ounce of energy into trying to win these games and all the all these other teams are too um but we feel like we have a lot of talent that's built up on this team and that we should be able to come out and, and win these games and we haven't been able to so yeah it, you know it's not it's not a great feeling but it's one of those things where you can't let your feelings like get in the way of seeing what is reality for your team. And the reality for our team is that we have a talented team um, that has done a lot of great things in the past and have a lot of those guys back. So even though you're emotional, like I don't, I don't, I really don't give a, an F about your emotions. Like you could be sad. You can be mad. I don't care. We got to go out there and practice. We got to keep trying to be the best offense that we can possibly be. You know, Listen, you know me by now, so you know I don't ask like hard-hitting, tough questions, which is why I think you come on with us every single week. But I have to ask you one here because, and I don't mean to put you on the spot, but fans are very frustrated with your head coach. Are mm-hmm. you guys frustrated with your head coach? Here's the thing. With with our head coach, like we have been on an upward trajectory with Brandon Staley ever since we've been here. Um, and so – there was this there was this thing that came out the other day and it was talking about how I was talking about inconsistencies and they pulled the clip out of it and said that I was mad um, with inconsistent coaching or whatever. And it was like it was so twisted because it, that's not what I said. I was talking about, hey, when when if we don't play at a high level, at a high standard and keep keep our consistency, we're going to lose games. And that that's just in any sport. That's not just in football. Um, and so for us, we're continuing to try to put ourselves together, put ourselves in a position to win. And I think we're able to do that every single week. And I think we've been doing that with Coach Daly. We're giving ourselves a chance. Um, and that's what you got to ask for. Players, we got we to gotta step up and we got to make these damn plays. Um, you know, coaches can only do so much. They can only put you in a position to be in a to, to win. And then a- after that, it's got to be players. Like players got to come alive and and finish the damn game, and um, like if you look at the games that we've that lost, even now, like we've been in positions to win the game. Right. And so, what do you want in the NFL? You want an opportunity to win the damn game, and then guess what? The players got to come through and do it. So, I think Coach Taylor's done a great job. He's super knowledgeable. He's been good with the, the managing the game, good with managing, um, you know, just how how we're, we're where our game plans are being put together. So, with that, like, what, like, what do you want from your from your head coach? You want him to give you a chance to win the games, right? And but I think also that's not, what got. But, but also not make mistakes, coaching mistakes that could cost you a game. I guess. Yeah, right. that's right. that's a real thing too. You yeah. know, um, you know, maybe you call a play that you shouldn't have been in, or a defense that you shouldn't have been. But you know, we're all human out here. We're all trying to, you know, they're all there's all risk. And then there's there's strategy to all of this, right? Offense is trying to be an advantageous for them. Defense is trying to be advantageous for them. Sometimes they get you. Sometimes you get them. Um, it's just back and forth. Um, and once you have guys that really understand the game, like coach Staley does, like, I wish, I wish you can, I wish everyone could sit in on a <laughs> Thursday and Friday coach Staley um, team meeting and right. listen to this man talk about football because it is incredible. Just like I learned so much from him about defenses, about you know, emotions, about tendencies, about like, for example, like, he was talking about the the nickel and talking about the nickel and the nickel traveling, the nickel stain and, and how, 
the nickel position is so hard because of the different stresses of different formation types. And if it's into the boundary of away from the boundary and tells of if he's pressuring things like that and all these different things that you guys, ne- no one ever knows about because you aren't, aren't looking at it that big, but it's like these one tendencies for one position and he can go on about every single position. And it's truly incredible what this guy knows and then how can he, he can manage a game and talk about cer- certain situations. And like, if it's the end of the game, like, Hey, we can't be playing soft. If there's too much time, we can't give up a field. Like, like these different things that, all matter. He's thinking of boom, 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 boom. And I'm like, if I had a head coach, yeah, this is exactly what I want them to be talking about too. And know this type of this game plan and know to this level. And so he's at the highest level of, of coaching that I've seen as far as his knowledge of the game. Right. And, and gets questioned by dopes like me. That's yeah. the funny part about it. Yeah. Really, yeah. Yes. Well, you guys don't see that. You know, you don't see that part of him. You know, you just see what he says in the media, right. which, you know, might be emotional, might not be the, you know, the actual, you know, X's and O's because we're not going to give all that stuff away. So right. all you see is Sundays. Um, really and that's how we get graded in this game is are you doing good on Sunday yes or no and you don't get graded on anything else or maybe the players didn't play up to the standards and everything comes back to the head coach or the organization and maybe it wasn't them but they're going to take all the flack for it because they're the the face of the logo so you're trending towards playing this week do you you feel like you're going to play or what man I cannot even say anything about it I, I honestly don't know it really is like how much can I tolerate and how much progress does this ankle get? And okay. so the progress from last week to this week, I've actually been really surprised. So that's a good thing. Um, but it's, it's like, okay, come Thursday, Friday, how does this thing feel? Can I tape it up? Can I brace it up? If I get tackled, is it going to be a one and done? Or can I actually, you know, go through a couple of plays and maybe get on a snap count? Um, but it really, it, it's really hard to tell right now, especially this early in the week. You're a great player. You're a better person. We appreciate you, man. And I promise you, we asked too many football questions this week. Next week, no football questions. No, it was great. It was great. I love it. I love being back with y'all. No, but too many football questions. None next week, okay? Zero. All right. All right? All right, boys. All right, buddy. We're looking forward to it. Good luck. Get healthy, man. Sounds good. We'll see you guys. All right. Eighteen carries, one hundred and twenty-one yards, two touchdowns. Your team goes to two and zero. Oh. I mean, you must be—you got to be on top of the world right now, my man. Yeah, that and rolling, man. You know, it's just—it's—it's it's awesome that we're starting the season off two and zero. Oh, you know, two two away games, two you know, two very tough places to play at. So, on top of just having a big week for you, I have to imagine that it felt good just because of kind of how the off season went right where you obviously hear where people are like, Oh, should they go after Dalvin cook? Should they go after Jonathan Taylor? Is this something that they need? And you know, the dolphins to their credit stuck by you were like, no, like we're good at running back. And then, you know, week one, the conversation is, Oh, the receivers are so great, blah, blah, blah. And then the Patriots kind of took that away and you were able to kind of carry the team this week and show them, Hey, like we're good with me. You do not need to be going out and getting these other players. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, during off season, there was a lot of talk and chatter and stuff like that. And the only thing I have to worry about is myself and, and my abilities and, and what I can bring to the table. You know, that's something that I'm always going to stand by. Uh, something that I always believe in is, you know, what do you bring to the table? And for me, it's, it's my power and aggression and that I've been in this offense for quite some time. So, um, you know, if the Dolphins do decide to bring somebody in at the time, it, it honestly didn't matter to me. Uh, because, you know, like I said, I was just wor- worried about my craft and what I got to do. But people don't realize it's it's a great question by Billy from this standpoint, Raheem. They see you on the field and that's all they focus on. And they don't really, and unfairly to you guys, probably, um, they don't really pay much attention to what goes on off the field. And it's a business. And so yeah. uh, even though you're confident in your skills, you're confident that you're the best running back for this football team, that part of it, the business side of it, where you're sitting there and there are rumors of Dalvin Cook and Jonathan Taylor, that's not easy to deal with. I think fans would be interested. To, like That's hard for you to deal with on a personal level, is it not? On a personal level, I mean, I, see, I'm different but just because, and hear me out on this. I'm, okay. The reason why I say I'm different is because I've had multiple, when I've been a part of multiple teams, I've always been the underdog guy. Right. You know, throughout – Throughout Purdue history, when I was playing at Purdue, I was seen as one of the un, you know underdog um, playmakers on the team. So I've always had this stigma of, of being an underdog in general. So when another team or you know when the team that you're on is talking about you know drafting a running back, 
I, that's out of my control. I can't right. do nothing about that. When a team's talking about bringing in another running back and offering them more money or whatever the case may be, that's still out of my control. You know, the only thing that I can control is my attitude and how I go about the business, you know, how I go about carrying myself. You know, I'm always going to have a smile on my face and I'm always going to be grateful and thankful for the opportunity. Um, but, you know, don't don't mistake that with aggression and what I'm going to do to people, you know, on a week on a weekly basis. You know, that's just how I see it. And that's that's the role that you got to play. Austin Eckler joins us every week on God Bless Football. And we know he had that you know, Zoom conference call uh, during the offseason trying to trying to make your lives easier. The life of a running back. Uh, what was that call <laughs> like, if you don't mind? Were you on the call? Yeah, I was on the call, um, and it was just basically just trying to check all the boxes of what, you know, guys have to do to, to be treated as such, you know, as a, as a value um, on the team. Because as of right now, I mean, you see what's going on with, with the running back market, and it's definitely tough, you know, especially with the God forbidden, you know, God, you know, whatever happened to, to Nick Chubb last night was, mm. you know, horrendous. I mean, I, I couldn't even see the video because I already knew – uh, that something like that would happen. But, um, you know, it, everybody says that running backs are replaceable. I mean, there's only a select few that can actually do what we do on a consistent basis, you know. Um, and, and Austin is one of those guys, you know. And it sucks that, you know, we, we are one of the only positions on that field that has all 11 guys hitting you all in one play, you know. So, I mean, the durability – I mean, plus we got a block. We got a block, right. we got block guys that are you know two hundred, three hundred, you know, pounds, two two times or three times bigger than us. So I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of things that that you can assure is that the fact that running backs do have a, a more demanding position, and we definitely have to do more and outside of our character than just running the football. I told Austin to stop blocking. Like, they pay him to run the football and catch the football. Stop blocking. That's what linemen do, you know? Yeah, they, they don't pay him enough to block, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so how man. does that work with Nick Chubb? It was gruesome. It was hard to look at. And I know you've been through it. You've, you've had your share of injuries, so yeah. you've been there. Uh, do you reach out to him? Like, how does that work with you? Uh, yeah, you try to reach out to him if you have the same, you know, same circle. Um, but all in all, you know, it's always, you know, I'm going to send my prayers to him just because – you know, I, I don't I don't like anybody in the league to get hurt, especially in your position. So um, when something like that happens, you just you just got to pray about it and pray that he, he'll be all right and that he'll bounce back. And, you know, if if you need to reach out, you know, I would I would like to reach out, too. So let's go to the Dolphins, though. Is this is this the best offense you've ever been on? Yes, this is, yeah, this is really. My you've been to a Super Bowl, Raheem. You've been to a Super know, Bowl, my that's, man. And that's why I said that's why I, it gave me a slight yes on that that one. <laughs> I mean, this team is just is there's a lot of guys on this team that can make a lot of different plays at any given time. Um, not to say that we didn't have that, you know, um, on that Super Bowl team because that Super Super Bowl team was electric, especially the defense, you know. And this team is, you know, is we're definitely getting up there, you know. Week by week, we just got to hit our stride and, and keep getting better. I mean, we got to figure out our flaws and, and work through them and, and perfect as much as we possibly can. Is this the uh, is this the most confident you've seen Tua playing quarterback? I mean, since I've been with him, yes. Um, the guy's just – he's he's taking on this role so well and he's doing it at a, a, at a high velocity. I mean, the way he's just approaching this game, you know, he's – He's he's bringing some of that island vibe to him, you know. He's he's bringing some of that culture to him, and he's he's really he's really embracing this offense, and he's doing his part. I mean, the guy's just he's a machine out there. He's just doing everything right. So I mean, you just you want somebody like that. You want a quarterback to be a leader. And he's definitely a leader. You know what's interesting? Billy has defended Tua for a couple of years now. Like he really has. No one has defended Tua more than Billy Gill <laughs> here on God yeah. Bless Football. People are, but here's what here's what I'm shocked about. People are still surprised that two, when Tua has a good game, like why are they surprised, Raheem, that Tua has a great game and he's off to a great start, and yet people are still surprised he's done it now for a couple of years. Yeah, I, I have no idea. I mean, it, there's a lot of critics that just don't believe in him. I, they, I guess they just don't yeah. want to believe in him, and I I don't understand that. I mean, tape speaks for itself. Um, records speak for itself. I mean. Have you ever heard of anybody else being five and zero against Bill Belichick? No. Like to be honest, like nope. in NFL history, like no. Bill Belichick is one of the greatest 
coaches of all time. Like, can we all agree to that? Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. he's, he's definitely up there in the top two or three. Yeah. And he knows situational football, but yet Tua is 5-0 and against this guy. Like, that's that, that's no mistake. Like, I, I hate to say it like that, but there's really no mistake to it. I mean, statistics are statistics, you know. I and the sky doesn't lie. And what he's been able to do is just, I mean, let alone for that, I mean, that should literally shut a lot of those critics up. Yeah, yet it hasn't. It's weird. Uh, you love Belichick. You love beating Belichick at Belichick's place, and you in particular scoring the winning t- like the dagger that ended the game. You love that, didn't you? Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, you you gotta love something like that. I mean, you- <laughs> take the quarterbacks out of it, Raheem. We'll get you out of here in just a second. Uh, take the quarterbacks out of it. I think Tariq Hill is the best player in football. Am I wrong? No, nah, you're not wrong about that. That guy's he definitely makes a lot. I mean, he's 99 for a reason. He just got 99 on the. I mean, that's. Uh, it's a video game, right? But yes. honestly, the guy plays like it every time. I mean, he wants to go out there and be his best, and when his best is required, and he goes out there, and he definitely makes those plays, man. The plays that you're sitting back and like, wow, I can't believe he did that. You know, it's still it, it's 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 magical. I mean, for him to do something like that, you know, it's just I don't know. The guy's just different. He's different. It's definitely the fastest offense you've been a part of, right? Oh, oh yeah, definitely a fastest for sure. Yep. Who yeah. wins in a race? You, Waddle, or Hill? Me. Really? Mm-hmm. Just yeah. straight ahead, hundred yard dash. It's you. Hundred yard dash. I'm. I'm getting both of them. Re- and who's mm-hmm. in second? That's that's for them to decide. You don't care because you already I passed like the that. finish line, right? <laughs> you can't exactly. see. They're behind him. <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> exactly. Do you think? Do you think Tariq would give me the same answer if I asked him? Do you think he'd say Raheem? No, he's not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> How about Waddle? No, he's definitely not going to do that. You he, guys all not, think you're the fastest. <laughs> we all think we're the fastest. I mean, even Devon A. Chain, the running back, thinks he's the fastest. So, right. Don't tell me I Barrios don't... thinks he's the fastest, though. No, There's Barrios, Barrios thinks fastest. he's in the conversation. He's, he's not he's in the conversation. <laughs> Spoiler: He's not. Yeah. <laughs> Spoiler. <laughs> yeah. All right, man. We appreciate it. Good luck against Denver. I see, like, you live in my neighborhood, so I know what you're thinking. You're sitting there. I see the golf course in the background. We can't no, play on no, our no. golf course. It's been closed down for a Oh, no, no golf course. The other house is on the golf course, though. Oh, the other house. Okay. Well, he's, he's, he's having some work done in this house, so he's staying somewhere yeah. in that community. But it's been annoying, right, with no golf? I mean, it's first-class problems, Raheem, but it's annoying with no golf course, right? I know. We need to, we, we got to get out there once a quick. The course is looking good, though. You can you can admit that, though. Have you seen I, the peak yeah, of it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we're not. There's there's these people like patrolling out there. You can't really go out there. They kick you well, off. I'm saying, but if you drive like on the first, the front, the front nine, yeah. you'll you'll see. We'll bring Billy along. He has golf clubs in the back there. He does that just to pretend he's a golfer. He's not really a golfer. Uh, it's weird, yeah. right, so we got we got a we got a poser. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm not going to argue with that. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man, Billy, come on, man. We're going to get you right, though. Well, listen, we'll bring him out there, and we'll teach him how to play, okay? Right, right. right. We'll put those go- those golf clubs to use. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, Raheem, go win one for Fangs, man. Lord Fangio, right. okay? Appreciate y'all. Y'all have a good one. Billy, did you enjoy Raheem Mostert? Because he is so excited to be part of this offense. He wanted to say that Mike McDaniel is the best offensive play caller that he's ever had as a coach. He stopped short of it because he didn't want to upset Kyle Shanahan, who's really, really good at this. But, Billy, it must be so much fun to be a fan of the Dolphins right now. It has to be, man. (laughs) It's still two weeks in. You know what I mean? Like, I'm still not getting, like, super, super excited about it. Was I excited that Raheem Mostert was on? Yes, Was I excited that you tried to turn him against me and have him bully me over golf clubs behind me? No, I didn't love that. That wasn't the best thing in the world. It was a weird turn by you for some reason. I had nowhere to go. I'm sorry. Yeah. (laughs) So you guys live in the same area, huh? Like in the same community or whatever? Yes, we do. Yeah. Same development. have, Have you guys ever actually hung out and like golfed or anything like that? Or is this just one of those things where you just always make plans that you guys are never going to actually follow through on? Well, no, the only reason we have it is because when Raheem and I first met, which was on this show uh, about a year ago, they started redoing our golf course. So we have not mm-hmm. played golf yet because no one could play golf on our golf course. But I have seen him around the neighborhood once or twice. Russell Wilson, like, are we going to just say he's bad? No, right. He's not bad. 
Well, he's not. He's won a Super Bowl. He should have won a second Super Bowl. I think he was a Super Bowl MVP, but he has played himself out of the Hall of Fame. <laughs> not many players have done that uh, in the history of the NFL. But Russell Wilson was a first ballot Hall of Famer, and I'm not certain he's in the Hall of Fame at this point. You think he's, he's like a punchline? He's like a joke. Yeah, he's not out of the Hall of Fame. You think he's not going to make the Hall of Fame? Get out of here. He was first ballot. Like, Mike, three years ago, you would say Russell Wilson was trending towards first ballot Hall of Famer, right? Yeah, no, I I still think he gets in the Hall of Fame. I just think now you get a little bit of a, eh, the, the end, it was a little shaky. Mm. All right. Uh, would you trade uh, Aaron Rodgers for Russell Wilson? Ooh. No. Really? Not No. Why? Because he, Russell Wilson is terrible. We just talked about that. Yeah. Russell Can I ask Wilson you a question? Terrible. Can I ask you a question, Mikey? A? If Zach Wilson were drafted, now you're going to say Trey Lance, but that was not Kyle Shanahan's pick, okay? Okay. It wasn't. It was not his pick. If Kyle Shanahan drafted Zach Wilson, would he look something like Brock Purdy? No. I actually had this conversation last night. Brock <laughs> Purdy wouldn't look like Brock Purdy if he was on this Jets team. No. Oh, no. Brock, Brock Purdy, Purdy out of the league like, if he was on the Jets. Yeah, exactly. And <laughs> right. and I think they're like polar opposites. I think Brock Purdy doesn't have any of the real big physical tools, but right. he does what Kyle Shanahan wants him to do. Zach Wilson has every physical tool you could imagine for a quarterback. He's just terrible at it. That's all. Yeah. It's It's all in his head. Do you guys do that thing where you just assume, like you see stars that would have been available to your team, and then imagine if they were on your team and just assume they would have been terrible on your team. Cause like prior to this season and last season, like that's what I would do with the dolphins. Right. So like coming out of college, T Y Hilton went to FIU. He was available to the dolphins. I'm like, Oh man, the dolphins should take T Y Hilton. And then he goes up to Indianapolis and he plays on the Colts and he plays with Andrew Luck and he has like a really nice career. Right. And then I think like if he would have been on the dolphins, he would not have been T Y Hilton. Like he would have yeah. been T Y Hilton, but he would not have had the same career had the dolphins taken him. So for a long time, something going around social media was the sports what if game. Like you could just pick one of the what ifs. And my favorite one was what if Peyton Manning had come out after his junior year when the Jets had the number one pick and they would have taken him. Hmm. And I I, I, I want to believe he still would have been Peyton Manning. Oh, but I think I know in my heart he wouldn't have been. <laughs> well, I mean, what been. if what if Peyton Manning would have had his rookie year that he had with the Colts with the Jets? What would they have done with him? Traded him. <laughs> turned him into Zach Wilson and then signed Brett Favre. Uh, Billy seemed to disagree when I was asking that question. He thinks that Kyle Shanahan would have turned Zach Wilson into a Hall of Fame quarterback. He does. I know he does. <laughs> he does. Maybe not a Hall of Fame quarterback, but, but a better like he, one. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Very He's really good. <laughs> Kyle Shanahan is a really good, like Jimmy Garoppolo with Kyle Shanahan is a different quarterback than when he's not with Kyle Shanahan. Look what he's doing with the Raiders and Josh McDaniels is supposed to be pretty good at this. I mean, and he has not looked great through two weeks. It is. He's a great coach, man. I would trade Aaron Rodgers for Kyle, uh, Kyle Shanahan. How about that? Okay. Yeah, because then he turned Zach Wilson into the quarterback we wanted to be. <laughs> No, he wouldn't. But to Billy's for earlier point, Kyle Shanahan would not be nearly the head coach for the Jets that he would be for the 49ers. So, no. like, Belichick would have been a disaster for you guys. A disaster. <laughs> <laughs> the you got worst. Brady. <laughs> is Brady. Belichick, wait, is Belichick playing himself out of the Hall of Fame, Stugatz? He certainly. He's going to be a first ballot Hall of Famer. I think, if anything, they should make Belichick wait. Like, look at his record without Tom Brady. It's pretty bad. It's below 500. Uh, Brady left him and won a Super Bowl. Belichick has done nothing since since Brady left. He made the playoffs once. Um, I think, at the very least, he should not be a first ballot Hall of Famer. They should make him wait like 10 years to get in. He's an, he's an overrated coach. Yeah, that's all. Like... He's, He's a great like, coach. I, I don't want to say the wrong thing. He here, may not okay? last 10 years. Well, what do you mean? Like, like five years from the day you retire, you can get into the Hall of Fame. Belichick will get in five years from the day he retires. Okay. I'm saying just in light of what's happened over the last four years, it's been proven he's not an all-time great coach. Uh, and therefore, they should make him wait like 10 years. I don't know. He's old. 
I, I understand that. But sometimes people get into the Hall of Fame and they're no longer with us. And someone has to accept on their behalf. You know, you want to be that guy. This took a turn. <laughs> Who would accept for him? Kraft? No. Uh, <laughs> Brady? Belichick's bust should be Tom Brady's face. How about that? Okay. 